Let's speak to the Sunday Times Asia editor, Philip Sherwell. Uh, Philip, this morning's action appears to have happened at the same place where there was an hours-long standoff on Friday. How tense is the situation? Yeah, it's, it's heading towards boiling point already. It's only lunchtime today now in, in Yangon, and not just um, in, in, the main capital, in the main city, Yangon, but in several cities. Protesters are already gathering on the streets, and the military has moved in early this time to try and disperse them. They've fired um, rubber bullets, um, tear gas. Protesters have set up um, barricades. Some journalists who've been filming what's been taking place have been arrested. There's um, there's a sense, really, that today could be a very, very sort of ugly day on the streets. And and the protesters are buoyed by that news from New York. They, the, the, the words and, indeed, a video of the um, Myanmar envoy to the United Nations have spread like wildfire on social media and and um, uh, you know amongst people um, verbally in, in 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 Myanmar and they are they're very they're very hopeful that this is a sign that the regime itself could start to face more defections and they're also relieved because they feared that the world would kind of start to accept the legitimacy of this um, of this junta. But but significantly at the UN, it wasn't just this very emotional speech and unexpected speech by the envoy of uh, Myanmar, but um, the, U- the United Nations special envoy on Myanmar, and she is seen to be speaking with the endorsement of Secretary General Guterres. She said under no conditions should um, foreign powers recognize the uh, legitimacy of this um, junta. And she offered support to a sort of parliament in exile, which has been formed by NLD MPs, those who've not already been arrested, who are operating in hiding, and are starting to make appointments and try to reach out to the international community. So the the junta faces the protests on the streets that you're seeing today. Um, It faces the civil disobedience movement, which is strikes by government employees. And now, you know, increasingly, it's got these challenges internationally. So this, for both sides, is going to fuel the way they act today. The eyes of the world are very much on those streets in uh, major Myanmar cities. And um, um, I expect it will just develop today. Um, uh, These tensions are just the start. Indeed, Philip, as you say, whether it's internationally or within Myanmar, uh, people are demanding for the release of the democratically elected uh, officials, including leader Aung San Suu Kyi. What do we know about her whereabouts? Well, no one has seen her since February the 1st, which was the day of the coup. No one publicly, obviously, her captors have seen her. Um, It had been known from her NLD that she was under house arrest in her residence in the capital, Napidor. However, a number of NLD officials have said in the last 24 hours that they've been told she's been moved from there to an undisclosed location. So we, we don't know where she is. She already hadn't been seen. She, um, on Monday, faces another court hearing in the charges that have been brought against her. Um, these are of... Um, possessing illegal walkie-talkies and of being out and about canvassing during the elections in November. Um, But um, it may be that more serious charges are going to be brought. We haven't seen her. Her lawyers have not seen her. And um, this, this suggestion that she's been moved to a secret location is obviously also adding to this very febrile sort of sense on the streets and a sense of frustration and sense of anger. So, uh, you know, a lot of unknowns as people, as the uh, protesters confront the security forces today. All right. Thank you very much, Philip. Philip Sherwell reporting.